Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I am Shane. I am uh, joined today by Lynn McTaggart. How are you doing today, Lynn? Hi there, Shane. How you doing? Oh, it's such a, I'm doing wonderful. It's such a pleasure to have you on. You're a, a best-selling author and uh, an investigative journalist and a lecturer, so I'm really pleased to have you here to join us because we've been covering the whole power of eight and the power of our intention and all of this for quite a while, and I love how in your book you really get into the science, the nuts and bolts of uh, our power of intention and exactly the magic in it. I mean, it really does seem like magic when you really delve into it. It's, it's really mind-blowing. So uh, this part, I guess, of your journey started in around 2008. You want to kind of give us a background on that? Sure. Um, you know, in the early 2000s, I kept hearing about things like manifestation, the law of attraction, power of intention, all of this. And I'd also come off my book, The Field. I'd written a book um, where I put together a lot of the uh, pioneering discoveries of a lot of prestigious quantum physicists and other scientists who discovered that we're, you know, a lot different from what we're told. And some of that evidence was all about the idea that thoughts are things that affect other things. So being an investigative reporter by background, I kept thinking to myself, well, how far can we take this? You know, are we talking about just shifting a quantum particle or are we talking about curing cancer with our thoughts? And also what happens when lots of people are doing the same, you know, are holding the same thought at the same time. So I decided to test this with a great big experiment. Um, I knew a lot of scientists in consciousness research and I also had loads of readers around the world. The field was in 30 languages. And so I thought, well, if I just get them together and I create these well-controlled experiments with scientists and then ask my readers to send a collective intention, the same thinking, the same thoughts, to a target, <clears throat> to this well-controlled target, you know, we'll have the biggest global laboratory in the world. And we did that. And I, I wasn't really sure it was going to work. Um, <clears throat> but we've run 33 experiments to date, everything from trying to make seeds grow faster to trying to purify water with our thoughts, with many water experiments, to lowering violence in war-torn or violent areas, to even curing somebody of post-traumatic stress disorder. And of those 33 experiments, 29 have shown positive, measurable, uh, mostly significant effects. Now, that kind of track record is not achieved by the best drug in the world. So <clears throat> that was fascinating to me as, as we were, this was all unfolding. But at one point, as you say, around 2008, I thought to myself, well, I suppose I ought to be running workshops because that's what people who are doing this kind of work do. I hadn't run too many workshops before that. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure how to scale down what I was finding in the big studies to a workshop setting. So I'm kicking it around with my husband one day and I say to him, well, I don't know, maybe I'll put people in groups of eight or so and have them send healing intention to each other. And he's a great headline writer. He's also a journalist. And he said, yeah, I love it. The power of eight. And that's basically how it started. I ran our first workshop. We ran our first workshop in Chicago, 2008. We put people in groups. I had lots of uh, techniques for intention. I'd learned from various intention masters and also the science that I'd put into a, a little program I call Powering Up. So I could teach them that, but I didn't have any kind of blueprint for how to put people in a group and do an intention together. Should they hold hands? Should they be thinking the same statement? You know, and so I was kind of making it up as I went along. And I asked them to do this, figuring it was going to be a kind of a gentle feel good effect, like getting a massage or having a facial. And the next day I asked them to come back into the workshop and tell us what had happened, figuring, we're going to get those kind of mild effects. Well, that's not what happened. When each of them took the mic in turn, they described extraordinary instant healings. One person had terrible knee arthritis and was due for a knee replacement and showed up the next day walking normally. 
Somebody else had terrible migraines <clears throat> and her head was clear. Somebody else, and that was for 15 years she had migraines. Somebody else had terrible digestion, real big gut problems, and her gut felt normal. And on and on it, it went to more and more extraordinary things. We had a woman <clears throat> with a dislocated shoulder where the shoulder just popped right back into place during the intention. We had somebody else with cataracts who said her eyes were 80% better. Somebody else with stroke who said she could focus. Her eyes hadn't focused since she'd had the stroke and they were focusing normally after the intention. You know, other people with terrible walking problems suddenly walked normally, MS threw away their crutches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I was really dumbfounded, um, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> and that was really, this book has really been my journey, too, to try to figure out what on earth went on there and what has, on earth has gone on in the hundreds and hundreds of workshops I've run since. I really like how you took a skeptical approach to it. And you really, uh, you know, like considering the placebo effect, because that was one of the first things that I thought of in one of your chapters. You talk about how it would be impossible for the placebo effect because you've seen, uh, you know, effects in fetuses and small children and things that kind of are outside of the realm of, hey, you know, I think I'm feeling better. You know, it's uh, actual science. And I think that's probably the best proof I've seen in your book that, you know, you can rule out the whole placebo effect because that's one of the things skeptics typically go to in this area when you see this miraculous thing you're like well they just thought they felt better you know it's that whole placebo effect but you even yeah. cite the uh the work of dr emoto with the the water and um, i know a lot of my viewers have seen that and uh, also the rice uh, a number of youtubers have done the rice experiment where you sort of put your intentions in the rice and the you know you speak the love to the one and it's seems to be preserved much longer and you know they've actually documented the whole thing and so there's something magical i mean it's 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 scientific but it's beyond the realm of what we typically think is even possible in mainstream uh, science you know yes and that's the thing as you say i first were just i was just writing it down to a placebo effect but one of my big <clears throat> One of the big parts of my journey was trying to figure out why this was all happening. So I was looking in every area. And as you say, once we started doing things where we were trying to send intention to babies and fetuses, um, you know, we were having big effects or people who were unconscious, we were having big effects. But also, and the most surprising thing of all, we were having effects on the senders too there was some sort of mirror effect that was going on here. So that when people sent intention, they were also getting healed. And now I'll give you a wonderful example of that. Not long ago, I ran a batch of power bank groups in, uh, at the Mile High Church in Denver. And one of the senders of one of these groups was a guy called Wes, Wes Chapman. And Wes had been um, had some pretty high hopes and dreams. He was a very bright guy. He was in, in, in college studying biochemistry, thinking of being a doctor or a biochemist. And then he got drafted um, at the very end of the Vietnam War where there were no more student deferments. So he, um, he got a very low lottery number. He knew he was going to be drafted. So he went in to the Air Force and he was there for the final chaotic years of the war and right in combat duty. And it was so traumatic for him that he came home terribly depressed, never finished college. And his life just seemed to go in a downward spiral. Even marrying the love of his life, his second wife, uh, didn't last long. She got a fast growing cancer, so he lost her. And his life just deteriorated to the point where he had got to feeling what's the use. By the time I met him, he was 65, living in a senior facility and having a hard time even making breakfast for himself. And he participated in one power of eight group. And it was, he was sending intention. He, didn't, he, he had still suffered from depression, but he didn't want to put himself forward because there was a woman there with stage four cancer. So he just sent. And when he came, got up the next day after that, he had this heightened, incredible heightened sensory awareness, which happens a lot with 
the people in my groups as though they've had a mystical experience. And then the next time, and everything, he was just feeling really weird and different. Like the birds were more beautiful than he'd ever heard. And the grass was greener than he'd ever seen. He drank a cup of herbal tea and it knocked his socks off, he said. So all of that was going on and also joy. But then the next night when he went to sleep, he had this amazing vision. It was a dream, but it was like a lucid dream where he dreamt he met his 19 year old self who was the one who was had left to go off to Vietnam at university, at his university. And there was somehow the 19 year old self conveyed to him, not with words, but more as a feeling that, hey, it's okay, there's still time. It's not too late. And he is a totally changed person. He is smiling all the time. He is participating in these groups in the church. He's, you know, he's, he's talking about his experience. He wants to write, he's doing power, 90 minute power walks. You know, the guy has changed in an instant and he wasn't even the recipient of this intention. I think that's interesting because as we, we've done this power of eight at eight, um, which is more of a global uh, group that we usually between 60 and 100 people get together and we'll just kind of pick a topic and go with it. But uh, we had a, a lady named Jenny in New Zealand and this whole, I think in the book you refer to it as the leaky bucket uh, effect, but we were, where our intentions were for someone else and she had this chronic illness with her back, uh, back pain, chronic pain that just went away, an instant healing. And she wasn't even the focus of it. So it's almost like when you become this conduit for healing energy, there's like the leaky bucket effect. It, I mean, you can actually reap the benefits of becoming this, uh, I don't know, like a conduit, if you will. Well, you know, the amazing thing that goes on here, and we showed it with, as I say, I was looking in every possible way for why this works. And I had the good fortune for Life University to offer to do brainwave studies on this. To they, they gave me their neuroscience department and said, here, you know, what let's study it. So we did a pilot study with using seven groups of students and created power bank groups with them. And we put an EEG cap to measure brainwaves on one of the senders each time. And we found very consistently, and to the surprise of the neuroscientist, Dr. Stephanie Sullivan, who did the study, that <clears throat> every time we did that, uh, there was an immediate quieting of the parts of the brain that make us feel separate. The parietal lobes, which are right back here in the back of the head, and they help us to navigate through space, but they also make us feel separate mm -hmm. and apart. This is us, this is not us. And also the parts of the frontal lobes, right frontal lobes that are associated with worry and doubt, that had been turned down way down too. So these were brainwave signatures of people who were in a state of ecstatic oneness, um, almost identical to the uh, brainwaves of Dr. Andrew Newberg, from, formerly of the University of Pennsylvania, who had done a lot of studies on Sufi masters and Buddhist monks. And he found identical brainwave signatures with those people. The only difference, though, is that those are people who study for uh, disciplines for years. Uh, and they also need hours of priming to get into those alternative states. Our people were a batch of students who've never even meditated before, much less done a power of eight group. And all they had was a 12 minute video from me telling them how to do it. Nevertheless, in that very instantaneous moment, in the first couple of minutes, they were transported to the miraculous. That's amazing. I think what's cool about it is it's almost like uh, you, when you get in this group like this, you sort of take away your own consciousness and become part of this overall consciousness of the whole group. Like there's one consciousness that the group is tapped into is the, the way you make it sound like uh, that separateness goes away and we become one in this group and that intention is magnified. Uh, it's almost an exponential effect, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, that's it. We become one mind. You know, we become one consciousness. We are we are hooking into consciousness in a much more 
visceral way. And when you are part of that super mind, that you know, global mind, that's where miracles can happen, where you lose your sense of individuality and feel a sense, a sense of ecstasy. And you know, that's the way we were meant to do things is as a group. You know, in every way, I looked at this a lot with my last book, The Bond, we were never meant to be alone. We were always meant to be part of a greater whole. And so I think this is an experience of that, something we never get to do these days. You know, we're all so alone. And when we do experience it, amazing things can happen. And in that space also of giving, of selfless giving, we also don't usually get to do that. You know, all of our culture is all about me, 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 me. And, you know, <clears throat> we've been the me generation for quite a long time. And this is really a you generation approach. And what happens when you start looking at the science, when you do things altruistically, it affects you positively. I mean, people who have the science shows, and I talk about it in my book, The Power of Eight, the science shows that when you do anything for someone else, it has a big effect on a thing called the vagus nerve in our body. It's the longest nerve in the body that starts in the neck, winds itself around all of the major organs, and also is involved in the release of things like oxytocin, the hormone oxytocin, which is that you know hormone that gets feel good hormone that gets released when we are expressing love or compassion. And this has a really big positive effect on the immune system. It keeps refreshing it and it gets better and better. And when you look at all the studies of altruistic behavior, people who do things, anything for anyone else, live longer, are healthier, are happier in every regard. Do you think we're moving into an era where these things of this, you know, because it seems like our society and everything's, geared towards separation, you know, whether it's race or culture or politics, which we'll get into that later with our intention. Um, but I think, uh, you know, is that all going to start falling away as more of this becomes common knowledge about our, the power of intention and the, the strength we have, have as, uh, you know, a single unit? Well, I think it will because I think things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. I mean, we are things that we know about the things that we always took for granted, um, our politics in our in America, um, our attachment to Europe in the UK, uh, a lot of the UK, uh, a lot of the European countries, and all over the world, things as we know it are breaking down. Mm -hmm. And so we, ha you know, many of us are sitting here, very very frightened of this. Um, but I think what will come out of this is people understanding that we have to recreate the kind of communities that we have, these small communities that help each other, that work with each other. And I think that is the way, that is the only way right now. Totally, I agree. So I think, uh, you know, as we move towards this, do you think it's gonna have this bleed over effect with the people that are, you know, as it enters the consciousness, if we're all one, the people that participate in things like this and have an awareness of it, do you think it will just kind of through that conscious brain that we're all part of, um, you think it will just have a spillover effect naturally or do you think people have to really have an awareness of how this works? You know? No, I think it'll spill over naturally because power of eight groups, you know, don't have a political bias. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, let me tell you about one of my intention experiments I ran last November to give you an idea of the power of group intention to heal this kind of division. Mm -hmm. um, I had an opportunity to work with a guy called Dr. Salah al-Rashid, who is like the Deepak of the Middle East. And a doc and he's, you know, he is an Arab and he is got a big following among all the Arab countries of people who are very interested in peace and transformation. I also worked with, simultaneously, with a woman called Sippy Ras, who is a well-known Israeli documentary maker who lives in, in Israel. And I brought the two of them together and said, let's do an intention for Jerusalem. Uh, and Sippy wanted to film it. And Dr. Al Rashid has a studio in Southern England 
where he can broadcast to nine different locations. You just need to put cameras in di nine different locations and what shows up on the screen of the presenter like me is all nine little, little squares. So we had cameras in eight conference rooms in eight different cities in different Arab countries, you know, everything from Saudi Arabia to Kuwait to Bahrain, Oman, Jordan, et cetera. And the ninth camera was in a large auditorium in Jerusalem filled with Israeli Jews. So we had Arabs and Jews participating together. Remember, these people have grown up eating each other. They've been taught that the other party has horns growing out of their head. They're taught to hate and kill the other. So we had them doing this thing together. And I chose Jerusalem because, you know, it's a city that belongs to all the major religions. You know, you have the Dome of the Rock there and the Wailing Wall for Islam and the Wailing Wall for, uh, for Jews. So, and of course, the, the way of Christ for the Christians. So we got together and I also ran this over my YouTube. So I was in a studio, this studio, beaming out to all these different places and running it on my YouTube channel. And afterward, because of the technology, I could speak to them, they could speak to me, and they would also be heard by all of the other places where the, our cameras were located and also on my YouTube channel. So I started calling on the people to start talking about how it was for them. I just asked them to raise their hand and I would call on them. And we had Arabs saying to the Jews, you know, everybody was crying. Everybody was saying things like, you know, we, we were, our intention was to lower violence in a part of Jerusalem that had become very violent, Damascus Gate area. But the point was, and you know, afterward we, we looked at the data and it looked like there was a major lowering of violence there. But even more interesting was what happened to the participants. When I called on the individuals to stand up and you know, talk about how it was for them, you know, the Arabs were sending love to the Jews. The Jews were saying, my God is your God. It's enough. The end of violence. We need to get together. We love you. I mean, it was so moving, as I say, everybody was crying. So there's, if we can get Arabs and Jews to send love to each other, how much easier is it to do that with Republicans and Democrats, you know? <laughs> and I mean, that is one of the things I'm working on. <clears throat> I'm setting up a series of pilot intentions where I've got people of an area coming together and having Republicans and Democrats in the same auditorium together, sending intention and watching what happens. That you know, amazing. and it's people might believe what they believe even more firmly after this but it just means they don't have to hate the other person they can come together in common currency they can figure out what they have in common and let's face it we all have the same values we want safe streets we want good schools we want enough food to eat we want a nice place to live we want good roads you know everybody wants that so there are plenty of things we can come together in as a country or a society, wherever it is, where we find common ground and we find it, I find fastest when we do this kind of intention together, which is essentially a big group prayer. And it just allows the heart to leap across the fence. That's wonderful. Yeah. I don't know if you think it's as bad as it's ever been, but it does seem like politics has really become pretty polarized. Um, I try to just be an observer to it and not get sucked into it. But I, I like to watch what's going on without, you know, sort of getting sucked into it. But it does seem like sure. more than ever, people are really at each other's throat about. I mean, people are even afraid to say who they did or didn't vote for just for the repercussions okay. of that information getting out there. And I don't know that it was like that before. I don't know if no. I'm just growing or if things are really changing. You know? No, I mean, I think, you know, there was a certain amount of polarization around the Vietnam War, but for people to be as, as, as hateful to each other because of their political beliefs is, I think it's a new low. And I think we are being manipulated in my own head. I think we're being manipulated by, you know, the powers that be in order to, to, uh, express ourselves this way and to be more uh, more angry than we need to be. And so I think now more than ever, 
we need little groups that aren't just homogenous, but are people of all persuasions coming together for common cause and praying, essentially praying together. Intent. This is a form of secular prayer in a way. Okay, before we get into the intention, of, which I think this was a great topic with because uh, we got the politics coming up and all this and so much divide over this whole election, midterm election coming up and Man, people are just at each other's throat, you know, about, uh, I mean, we really all want the same thing. We just have different ideas on how to go about doing it. So uh, before we get into the intention, though, I wanted to uh, bring Eileen in because you've actually taken uh, her course. Um, and you want to tell me what that was like for you? How, how many days was it? Because wasn't it a like a three-day class or something? Yeah, it was, um, I, I've read all of her books and I participated in her early intention experiments um, in the 2000s, the early 2000s. And so we picked up her book, we did a book review together, and then people started responding to us saying, oh, we've bought the book, Shane, we bought the book, Eileen, when are you gonna start our Power of Eight group? So really it was organic, the people bought the book and asked us to do this Power of Eight. And after we did that, she sent me an email saying, um, um, she's doing an uh, Power of Eight webinar, three days for healers. And I thought, well, since I'm leading this group on YouTube, I better really know what I'm doing. So I took her Power of Eight for Healers three-day webinar, and it was awesome. And um, it was three hours a day for three days, but she went over. You know, so I think one day we did an extra hour, and then the next day we did an extra half an hour. So the course itself is based on the contents of the book, but whereas the chapter might only take you this far into it, Lynn is live during the webinar and she'll take you much deeper into the topic and then she'll open it up to the group where she's talking to you directly and she might even pop you up on the screen and answer your question. Um, you get to actually interact with Lynn and interact with the power of eight and that's the power of intention ah oh, that's very nice yeah it's yeah. just much like we were just talking on zoom you guys uh, you just download the free app of zoom and just meet online for three hours so it's like a three-hour class yep and on zoom days. That's and really like cool. i said she went over an hour so the first class was actually a four-hour class because once she gets into it even she doesn't want to leave it oh i bet that's fun it is. And um, the Power of Eight book itself, you and I have gone over specifics and chapters in there with our YouTube group before we actually started doing the intentions, which we call meditations because we're doing them a little bit longer, a little bit differently, but they are incorporating all of the Power of Eight techniques. And, you know, she does mention the Heart Maths Institute, which you and I always mention too, that when we entrain our hearts, and we breathe in and out of our hearts, we're really using the Heart Mass Institute techniques. Mm -hmm. They deserve the credit for that because they put out books on that like 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, I love that the, the book was really well written and I love how it goes into the science of it. And so for all the skeptics out there, it's got nice hard evidence mm -hmm. to support all the claims she's making in the book. So. She seems like a scientist. Didn't she feel like you were talking to a scientist, but very down to earth yeah, and very yeah. warm and kind as well. But she's not a scientist. She has just literally made her career based on hard science, reviewing it, um, examining it, seeing how it applies to things like meditation, intention, um, psychic, um, mental, heartfelt energy. Now, who would ever think of applying science to heartfelt energy? Well, Lynn McTaggart did. And her first book that I read, um, I think it might have been in the 90s even. I was based in England at the time when she was either based in England or Scotland, as we were both Americans, of course. And um, it's called The Field. And it's examining all the hardcore quantum science that basically proves this this air around us is full of energy mm -hmm. and it picks up your thoughts. It picks up your heart intentions and it magnifies them and it brings it back to you. Yeah. It's that investigative <laughs> reporter background that she has that really helps her, you know, 
bring in the, the, the cold hard facts, as they say, to support yeah. what's being said rather than, and I, I, I can tell she's a skeptic at heart, which is a good thing for me because um, I am too, you know, I will give people the benefit of the, of the doubt, but I do like to see, you know, what evidence do you have to support the claims you're making, particularly when they're so far out there, which these are some far out claims, but the more you look into this stuff, the more you can see something is truly happening. And, uh, and, and I'm glad she ruled out. I was just talking to her earlier about the uh, placebo effect, because that was one of the things I'm like, you know, is it the placebo effect? But then you see it in, you know, fetuses and young babies and in areas that it couldn't be someone just being optimistic about the outlook or the effect or, or whatever, because, yeah, you know, um, her, her, um, her, the second book she wrote was called The Intention Experiment, based on her doing intention experiments globally. And these things cannot have placebo effects. Like I think that I did these with her. Uh, I didn't know her, she didn't know me, but I joined in with like 14,000 other people. And she would like take, a, the first one was a bay leaf in a lab um, with real scientists in Texas, if I remember correctly. And um, the, the intention that we were doing as a group, we all logged on live on the internet in the early days. So we crashed the site, we <laughs> crashed the internet. She had to go out and build up this big network so that she could like take between eight and 15,000 people and put them in one room. You know, this is before Facebook, before YouTube, before any of these massive platforms she was trying to use and utilize a platform that didn't exist. So she's really ahead of her time that way. And I think we were trying to make the bay leaf more photonic, to emit more light. You know how leaves can be photographed, their light can be photographed? And that one succeeded as we were all, you know, in training our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and thinking of a good place and a good time so that you're in a loving space in your own body, mind and heart. We were just picturing this bay leaf glowing, glowing with light, getting brighter, getting brighter. And that, that had a positive outcome. So the bay leaf didn't have the placebo effect, that's for sure. That's totally true. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so yeah. I enjoyed uh, what I've read of the book. I'm still working on it. Um, but from what I've read so far, it's it's awesome. I love the way it's written. And you actually read the whole thing, and you've brought up little excerpts in some of the shows. and Yeah, we really covered it well in the first few um, Power of Eight at Eights on YouTube on Unbiased and on the Fence. But then we got so good at it and so used to it that we could just go straight to it after that. Oh, yeah, totally. So, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. And so you took the quick class, the three-day, yep. the shorter one. With about okay. 100 people worldwide, you're working with people live through Zoom all over the world. It's kind of like our show. That's awesome. So there's a longer course that we're talking about taking that starts up in January. Yeah, I think she starts it up in January every year, but I know she's definitely got one coming this year, and I'm going to sign up for it. And that's the um, it's the advanced intention course. Now, I think she had this course before she wrote or released The Power of Eight. So I don't know if it's tied directly to The Power of Eight, but it's becoming a master at intention, which really means um, becoming a master at manifesting because that's what our intention is. It's, it's manifestation. Totally. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like we're moving into this era where we do all need to become masters of our intentions, don't you? I do definitely, and what we're doing with the um, with the show is we're bringing together about a hundred people live every Saturday night from all over the world, who are intending the same thing. You know, after we entrain our hearts and get into the loving space, um, we then focus on a particular issue, and we do global issues because there's a hundred of us. We can't just focus on one person in the group, so we focus on the whole issue, but we do what she says because we go into specific details about that issue. Like, where is it taking place? What is the problem? How are we going to fix it specifically? We try to get, you know, she really stresses in the book 
that you have to get as detailed and specific as possible. Yeah, I think that's <clears throat> important because we're, a lot of it is, uh, you know, imagining it in your brain and that collective consciousness. You know, we, we were talking earlier about how it uh, it's like you create a group consciousness that everyone's tied into. And, you know, the funny yeah. thing is I always think yeah. of it like one of those plasma balls where you put your hands uh, on the outside of the globe and you can see the rays going to the... Oh, yeah. And I feel like I, I see that in my head for so many different things, and I see that the same way, you know, where you put the tips of your fingers on there and you see these little beams of uh, plasma going to the, the fingertips, and it's all leading back to this, this main sphere of plasma in the middle in one of the plasma balls and I see that like the whole world's like that and we're creating yep. this plasma ball between all of us this of consciousness if you will and uh, so when we tune into that it's like we're tuning in the, to the frequency of what we're wanting to intend on being different or changed or improved yep. and uh, it sort of makes us connected in that way so it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you and I often talk about the 100th monkey effect and that there is kind of this, like what Carl Jung used to talk about, the collective human consciousness, whether it's super or sub, there's somehow that we're all connected and every thought we have feeds back into that. So then when we get 100 individuals together live from all over the world and we power ourselves up the way Lynn recommends in the book, The Power of Eight, our energies are not only connected, but they're super strong. We've like energized them. And then we take that energy and we put it towards something that will help us all globally, will help the whole world, will help humanity, will help animals. You know, you and I, with our Power of Eight at Eight, group have gone up into cleaning chemtrails, into um, healing people after hurricanes, into quieting earthquakes, into dousing the flames with um, a lot of those forest fires. What else have we done? That's, that's a real global yeah, healing. healing and uh, healing the, or clearing our chakras was another Yes. One. Clearing our chakras, healing for veterans, mm -hmm. you know, for all veterans from any country. Mm -hmm. Mental illness and... Healing for children. Children, that was a, a big one. And yeah. safety, safety mm -hmm. for children. And then so, bringing about a new world, uh, just a new paradigm and, and human evolution and, you know, bringing about a, a more peaceful world just in general, you know, a new chapter. And then we didn't even talk about the leaky bucket, the fact that, you know when you do this you actually heal yourself as well that's kind of the the kickback you're not doing it so you do heal yourself you're doing it because you love humanity you love animals you love this planet and then when you give it all of your love of course it comes right back at you it comes right back to you yeah i was and just talking about you. Uh, uh, jenny from new zealand earlier that experience the spontaneous healing on her back i was talking to lynn about that yes it's, it's amazing that you know real world effects happening like that and you know the thing is with jenny she watched it like a day later so oh yeah retro causality yeah that's amazing but she said she got into she was crying with with love and joy and she felt so emotionally involved in that meditation or intention for children and then she woke up with uh, a long-term back and neck problem where she was seeing her chiropractor twice a month for years, gone. And um, last time we communicated, it it has held. It hasn't gone back to the way it was before. I, I expect it to stay that way to, for it to stay healed. But I get emails all the time and comments from our regular Shane who say that they were crying either during or after the intention meditation that we do. And they're crying because they just feel so much love while they're doing it that yeah. it moves them emotionally they're not crying because they're sad no and it's like it's that compassion you feel that universal love and unity yeah. and you can really yeah. feel us compassion. coming together and it's it, it is really amazing um there's really not a feeling quite like that feeling of no. love and compassion that you can experience when you come together like that and you can tell it's much greater than we are as individuals uh to come together as a group like that you can really you can feel it yeah. you can feel it definitely my hands used to get hot and red and now they don't which means i'm upgrading my energy by leading 
most of these, not all of them, but most of the meditations, mm -hmm. at least my body now can handle it because I think my, my hands got hot and red the first few months because there was so much energy coming at us during yeah. this live intention meditation. And now it's like, it's like nothing. It's like, fine. It's like water off a duck's back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's palpable, especially if it's something a little heavier. Because we, 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 at first we were trying to toss it back and forth from, uh, you know, more lighthearted topics to uh, more important yet pretty heavy Sorry. topics. Yeah. And uh, because there's some like mental illness and veterans and things that are, you know, really pulling the heartstrings when you when you consider them. But I think they're all really we even, important. We topics. even tackled healing the darkness. Oh, yeah. in, in terms of global, like Illuminati cabal, mm -hmm. of greed and oppression, we even we even tackled that, and that was pretty heavy. Yeah, totally. So I, I'm glad we did it, and it's it's so funny that we just kind of talked about it. it. Was this idea we brought up, and here we are. How many months later we've been doing this? Like and six or seven months, I think. Yeah, it's awesome. And it what it came from the people it came from the listeners because we just did a book review remember yeah We're now just, we've like, actually yeah, had lynn, get together now we've actually had lynn mctaggart on the show and it's uh it's really a cool thing to see how far just this little idea you know and that's how my channel sort of started you know it was this yes. little idea and uh, once you see the grand of it you you almost can like well was that my idea to begin with or was there some greater help saying was hey. it seeded yeah was it seeded Seed that idea <laughs> you know level yeah exactly and um i know that we are small but mighty so i feel like and maybe a thousand or two thousand people will wind up doing the meditation within a month yeah. that's a lot of people i mean for us that's a lot totally. you know for Lynn, she's used to dealing with 15,000 or more, but for us, that's a lot of people doing our meditation. Totally. Yeah, I'm so glad to be a part of something that uh, really has some real world effects that you can actually yeah. see happening. So, I love I guess, it. I guess with that, uh, we can move right into the intention. Okay, let's just do a little intention. We're going to just hold it for a minute or two because normally I hold these things for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you can hold it for even longer. But, uh, you know, I invite you to look at my book, which has full techniques about how to do this. And I'm going to just walk you through very rudimentary stuff. But there's a whole batch of techniques to becoming a really good intender that are in my book, The Power of Eight. And I also invite you to read in there all of the steps you need to take to create your own Power of Eight group, to do this kind of thing on an ongoing basis with your group. And... Maybe not just have your group, but also invite people who are not of your political persuasion to take part and watch what happens. Okay, great. So I think we're going to do a little intention to um, lower the polarization and to in America. And as we get into the election, to lower the, the anger, to make people find common values together and to be resolved to work together for common cause, for all those things that need to be done in America, and to put aside their differences and to work together, because there's so many things we can do together. Definitely. You know, we can, we can heal a lot of America without going through this terrible division. So to put that succinctly, <clears throat> I'm gonna just come up with our intention statements. So our intention, is to connect with people of a different political party so that we can come together for common to affect common values and to create a, a united America together. So let's just hold on to that intention while we go into a nice little power up. So just to, this is a very simple thing to do uh, to start it off. But there's a lot you need to know about how to be specific and many of the other heart states and brain states that you need to use to do an effective intention. But for just this experience, let's just take a deep inhale and get centered. And a deep exhale. 
and a deep inhale and a deep exhale. And a deep inhale. And now on the exhalation, formulate that intention. Our intention is to connect with people who are not of our political persuasion so that we can come together in unity, in common cause to affect those changes that need to be done in America together, united. So let's hold on to that kind of intention statement while we bring that down to our hearts. We imagine Republicans and Democrats coming together, ignoring politicians, insisting on unity, coming together to help and connect with what we need to do to create a united America. And just as you watch those visualizations, Bring that intention down to your heart and send it out and connect. And feel all of the other people who are sending out the intention at the same time. Imagine that you're in the same room and you're holding hands together. And so let's just hold this for a minute. Now, in your own time, come on back onto this broadcast. And just let go of that intention and trust the process. And I invite you once again to try this kind of intention just before the election and to connect with people who are not like you. Republicans, if you're a Democrat, Democrat if you're Republicans and ask them to come together to do this with you and see what happens. I think it's amazing uh, because in my mind, I'm, I'm imagining other people. And like you were saying earlier on, it's, it's really like everybody wants the best. It's just people think their idea of what that is uh, varies, but really at the root of it all, you can really see how we really are the same, you know? <laughs> well, then we do want the same. We yeah. just maybe have different mechanisms for it or we're being manipulated as we all are by the politicians. Um, but I mean, just this uh, on uh, an upcoming Sunday, I'm running an intention like this in Florida with a batch of people who are Democrats, but they're inviting Republicans to do this too for, for a violence lowering intention for the area. And so the most interesting thing always is the fact that this changes the participants. There's an amazing mirror effect. Whenever I run a peace intention experiment, I survey the participants. And every single time, not only do we lower violence somewhere, but we lower violence in people's hearts. People become, the participants become more peaceful in their lives. They make up with estranged family members. They get along better with their bosses and their coworkers. Uh, they feel more love with, for everyone they come in contact with. That's been the biggest change. Nearly half of the people surveyed usually say, I feel more love for everyone I come in contact with. You know, they, they're, they're hugging strangers, basically. So that kind of peace not only affects people then, but it carries on in their life. So that to me is the giant ripple effect of this, whether it's in a power of eight group or a giant intention experiment. 
So I'm running that, Shane, and I'm also running another major Middle Eastern intention experiment where anyone can join. Um, that'll be on November 11th. Uh, anyone can join by just signing in to lynnmctaggart.com. They'll get full information about how to participate. And these intention experiments are always free for anyone to participate in. Uh, your links are below in the description box, so anybody can just click right through to that to get your book or to uh, get any of the online uh, uh, free intention stuff. And then you also offer some uh, webinars and uh, conferences and things like that. Do you want to share some of uh, what you offer? Sure. I mean, in my journey to try to understand why this worked, I also, in 2015, I put people into groups of eight after teaching them in six consecutive weeks uh, online. I then put them into groups of eight and had them stay together in the groups for the full year. And we had extraordinary things because I wanted to see whether not just their health, but would everything else in their lives begin to heal? And first of all, of the 250 we had in that first initial group, 150 continued to meet regularly with those, those groups. And of those 150, pretty much 100% of those people had major significant life transforming changes in their lives. I mean, we had people getting over chronic lifelong depression. We had he, a clinical psychologist was had suicidal depression, got over that. We had another woman with 15 years of chronic fatigue that went, another woman repigmented her vitiligo. But then we had people making up with their estranged fathers, with uh, having new relationships when they asked for them new and incredible careers, lots of entrepreneurial startups, amazing numbers of financial windfalls of the money, just the money they needed at the right time. And a lot of people reviewing and changing their life purpose. It was really remarkable. And for those people where they didn't initially have any changes, at some point I would say to them, you know what, as I did one woman, Andy, who couldn't find a new job, Andy, we tried everything, nothing was working. I just said, Andy, get off of yourself. Start intending for someone else. And the moment she did, she started intending for a young boy who tried to commit suicide. Her life totally transformed and she got a dream job. It just came out of the blue. And that happened over and over and over again. So now I run these master classes every year in January and it runs for a whole year where people are in groups, they get 10 sessions from me over the whole year, four catch-up sessions after the six initial um, teaching sis, um, uh, schedules. And then they're put in groups, they get weekly correspondence from, from me with challenges and, um, and questions and things for them to do. And I also monitor them month by month by month to see what's changed in their health, relationships, finances, career and life purpose. Oh, that's uh, so. That's that sounds like a wealth of uh, data to support the research you do as well. I mean, it's kind of well, yeah. Twofold, yeah I mean, it, it is because I'm you know I keep in touch with these people, and you know I'm running some specific webinars too. I ran one, become a better healer with the power of eight. Um, I'm running a train the trainers course sometime in 2019. People have said they want to teach other people how to do power of eight groups and i'm happy for people to do it privately but if they're going to train people they need to know a whole lot more about the science and everything so i'm putting together a whole certification program for it oh that sounds wonderful definitely something i want to take part of you know being that i'm a disseminator of information and all so that's, that's excellent um so i, I just one backup question to, to sort of go with what you were just saying there why why do you think it is um from your research that it's so much more powerful to intend for someone else other than yourself. I mean, that whole selfishness, is it, what do you think it is? Well, I think it's a lot of things, Shane. It's the group effect. You know, there's some sort of collective effervescence as a, as a psychologist, French psychologist, Emile Durkheim described it, collective effervescence. When you get in a group, um, there is the, the altruism piece. And there's new science as well, not only showing it helps your immune system, but it helps you when you do something altruistic, um, even something like this intention work, 
it activates that vagus nerve system, which also makes you more tolerant of people not like you. That's why the intention experiments where we have Arabs and Jews work so well, because they are suddenly doing an activity that makes them more tolerant of the other. So I think it's the altruism piece is a big, big piece there. It's, it is more powerful to give than receive. It's no question. It sounds like a Hallmark card, but it is. It's better for you, the giver. You know, you reap more. And there's lots of other things, too. There's intention, the power of consciousness. There's no question that intention works for good or ill. You know, oftentimes we're bringing our own baggage into our intentions, which is why they don't work very well, or we think they don't work, but we're still sending out all the time. We're sending out bad intentions and don't even know it. Um, there's all of those things, but there's another X factor that is all about this group effect, this group prayer effect, that is something we may never understand. I think we enter a state of pure consciousness. You know, we are in consciousness, and we, we, we feel it more acutely when we get out of the way. That makes a lot of sense. I know um, you, you actually cited uh, Dr. Dean Wright, and so I know you're familiar with him. I, I remember you citing him in the book, but I think this all really ties into this whole thing we see with random number generators and uh, the way we're connected in that way. Don't you feel like it's part of the same field of study? Oh, yeah, and it's part of the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, you know, we're, we are in consciousness. Call the field what you will. It is essentially consciousness. And we are in consciousness, and suddenly we are essentially becoming aware of it. You know, we're always there. It's not like we access it suddenly. You know, we're always there, but we come, we get to um, surf it when we're in a... When we're in a group together, we suddenly get to use it and, and use it in a really effective way because we lose our individuality and enter that state of oneness. And suddenly when we are not so little separate, lonely entities, and we can feel ourselves part of something bigger, collective consciousness, a collective group with a collective prayer, then that's extraordinarily powerful. It is. That's, in fact, it's life changing. Life changing. And you know what? Your book is magnificent. It goes into a whole assortment of science and research. And uh, congratulations on the success of it. It's been doing really well. And I encourage anyone to go out and pick it up and learn something because I believe this is the wave of the future that we're looking at here with the way uh, we can start utilizing this in a positive way. Because you know, I think we do use it in a negative way, just sort of out of ignorance <laughs> many times. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And that's how we're using it now. But if you don't have seven other friends to be part of, and by the way, it works with six, it works with 10. You know, it doesn't have to be eight, although eight is kind of an ideal figure. It's like a Goldilocks figure. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have your group of seven others to set up a, a power bait group with, um, all you need to do is come on my website, lynnmctaggart.com forward slash forum. And there's a place there where you can either advertise for other people to join you in your time zone. And I mean, join you virtually. You can join people physically, but you can also join them virtually. And that works just as well. Um, or you can join an existing group in, in your time zone. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of groups on that site. So you know, feel free to be part of that, too. That's excellent. So you have some events coming up. Do you want to mention anything? I have three events coming up in London. I just came back from running a retreat in, in Tuscany, which was wonderful. We had an amazing time. We did extraordinary power of eight work. And I've got, um, I've got the conscious of the, um, um, the Conference for Consciousness and Human Evolution, um, on the, I believe it is the 20th of October in London. And then a couple of weeks after that, the Science and Medical Network. This is all on my website under events. Uh, I'm speaking there. And then I'm running a one day workshop in the beginning of December, again in London with Alternatives, the church, um, <clears throat> which runs a lot of big events. And I've got <clears throat> loads of things happening next year. I've got 
an event. I'm running a workshop in Italy and Switzerland. And <clears throat> aside from that giant intention experiment on November 11th that everyone can take part of for free, I have a big intention um, experiment that we're planning once again to heal polarization in America, a giant one that I'll be probably running from New York. That'll be sometime in the spring, but I'll be announcing all of this um, <clears throat> with my weekly newsletters and information that I send to everybody. That's excellent. And all of that is available on your website, correct? Just join my community, lynnmctaggart.com. You can be part of our weekly intentions of the week where we send intention for people who have serious health challenges. I invite my whole community to do that every Sunday. So we have lots of stuff that's going on. Um, we have all kinds of information that we give, give people um, extra videos and all kinds of stuff. So just sign up to my website and you'll get, you'll have access to all of that. Excellent. Well, I do want to appreciate, I do appreciate the time you've taken to join in with us. I think you're right on the cutting edge of this new world that we always talk about on this channel and bringing about sort of a opening a new chapter of human evolution, if you will, of how we begin to, uh, you know, unite more and uh, work together as a single unit. And that's right, that's right in the science and your research and all your investigative uh, journalism you've done. So I really appreciate you coming on and I uh, love introducing the audience to your work and uh, I hope to have you back soon. Thank you very much, Shane. It's been my pleasure. All righty. Lots of love and light to everybody in the chat and we will talk to you all later. Have a good one. If you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash UOTF. Thanks.